Hi, I'm Josh from Apt. Now, Apt is an authorized Apple service center as well as sales. So we work with Apple to make sure that you have standard manufacturer warranties, Apple Care options, the whole gamut, just like you're going to an Apple store. So we're one of those dealers that you can trust that sells and supports Apple. Now, working with so many customers, because we sell a lot of Apple computers, one of the big questions always is, do I need to worry about viruses, antivirus programs, and you know, is my Mac going to be okay? I hear they don't get viruses. So really, the, my opinion with that scenario is Macs are very safe and secure by themselves. I think a Windows machine does have more vulnerabilities, but there's ways to protect it. So we like Windows machines too at Apple. We've got a lot of Windows products. But with Mac, there is less vulnerability. Now, I do give the warning that even though Macs really don't seem to open an email and boom, have a virus and problems like that, there is a great deal of malware that's just kind of flooding the Mac world right now. And it's pretty simple stuff. You're just getting, you're getting conned by a pop-up that says you're infected, you have a, a virus, you need to do this and download this program to clean it up. Uh, things like that where you're on the internet, you're surfing the web, and some kind of pop-up gets you. Or it could be extensions that pop up, hey, you need to install this to protect yourself. You know, something that you did not ask for. You have an Adobe update you need to do. Things like that, which sound legit, but some people, you know, they, they, they don't really distinguish if, if it's real or not. And they get fooled, and they download it, and they install something, and next thing they know, they're calling a phone number, and they want $299 to fix the virus. So, you need to be careful with the Mac, too. They are not perfect. They are vulnerable to these types of things. Let me show you a few ways to help yourself protect yourself from those types of vulnerabilities that are out there on the web. All right, so here we have a safe, fresh Mac. This is a brand new Mac, but I'm going to use it to show you some examples here. Now, when you set up your computer, it asked you to set up a system password. And you should have created one. In fact, nowadays you kind of have to. So you probably already have a system password. But really, my goal here is to start is say, let's be proactive. So if you don't have a password, go to System Preferences, which you'll always find Apple Logo System Preferences, if you don't have the little dock icon that looks like a gearbox. You go into System Preferences, go to Users and Groups. Here I have my username, and I should have a password. So if I click the lock that's locked, and now it's going to make an attempt to unlock. If I have no password, then when I click Unlock, it'll unlock. But I have a fancy password that I need to unlock this little lock icon. So now I could change my password. So if you did not enter a password and it worked, that means you have no password. So leave old password blank, enter in your new password, verify it a second time, give yourself a hint. And I've seen it before, folks, do not use your real password for your hint. That would not be a good idea. Click change password and boom, you have a system password. I heavily encourage that idea just because when things need to install it, they want your system password. And we've seen uh, in the past malicious programs try to just leave it blank and select enter, and it gets through on some people. So make a password. Another thing, in system preferences under security and privacy, here's a, a tricky one because you're not always going to want this, but you should be totally aware of it. Right on the front page, allow apps downloaded from... Okay, I'm going to unlock my lock, enter my secret password. And over here, I have the option of Mac App Store or the Mac App Store and identify developers like Adobe or big time names like that, Microsoft, so that when you're trying to install something from those legitimate sources as well as apps, the App Store, it's good. If you have selected anywhere, be cautious. That means that anything can install itself on your computer. However, you might be somewhere that's not listed under the Identify Developers section, but is a trustworthy source. So if you have one of these selected for extra security, you may need to come back here, temporarily switch to anywhere, go do your business, install your stuff, and then when you come back for more security, choose one of these top two items. Click the lock, and we have sealed the deal. So that'll allow programs that are more trustworthy kind of to be let in and the, the, the companies that are perhaps not identified to kind of be stumped. All right, so those are a couple ways. Now, another trick is, let's say you're surfing the web, you're on the internet, you get a, a pop-up, you're stuck. The pop-up sometimes will appear to be a second tab that pops up and uh, a long rectangular shaped pop-up is stuck across your screen. It could be a big one, but whatever it is, you are stumped. You don't know what to do. You're completely stuck. Uh, there's nowhere to go. You can't quit out. Or maybe it's a small window with a little box that says continue or quit, but it keeps recycling back to where you started. Here's what you do. 
go to the Apple logo and choose force quit. Now, if you're not able to do that, maybe you have a spinning beach ball problem or you're frozen, control, I'm sorry, option, command, escape is your three keyboard stroke to pull this menu up. This is the force quit applications menu. The same thing that would have popped up if I selected Apple logo force quit. So you're gonna say Safari, force quit, Safari, force quit, boom, it's gone. Now, when you go back to Safari, it's very probable that it'll take you right back to your problem. And you're gonna say, oh, that didn't help me, but do it again. Command, option, escape, or click the Apple logo, choose force quit, get that menu back. Choose a Safari again, force quit, force quit, boom, it's gone. And it sounds a little repetitive here, but the next time we go in there, now Safari is going to say, hey, uh, do you want me to reopen that last window or should I not? So now you know how to say don't reopen and then it takes you back to kind of your home page where you no longer have that pop up. If you have Google Chrome, which is recommended to be proactive, have multiple browsers, you know, Safari might have an issue in Chrome or Firefox may not. So install secondary or, or a third browser into your computer just to be on the safe side. Don't live through life with one browser because that could put you in a, uh, a bad place if that browser has an issue. In any event, watch out for Chrome because it'll act differently. The example of, of quitting, force quitting Safari twice and the third time when I open it, it gives me that message might be different with Chrome or Firefox. But in the end, force quit multiple times if necessary. That'll help you get out of there. Now, let's say we get the pop-up and a lot of you will get multiple tabs popping up and it's redirecting you to websites or it could be a pop-up you need to download this you need to install this program it's frequently a program that'll fix your problems and they want you to install it you might do it you might download it it might pop up where you gotta call a phone number and those are usually these big windows that say call this phone number toll free and they will help you with your problem these are not Apple Apple doesn't do that so be cautious when the phone number pops up don't call it don't pay anyone anything or give them your credit card just remember that if you're stumped try pulling up your force quit abilities and try to get out of there and do it multiple times if necessary so that should help you out before you get in trouble. But what if you got in trouble? What if you accidentally called the phone number and they logged into your computer and they showed you all sorts of things? What they love to do is they like to open up this fancy program called Terminal and they type in information and then all this information comes up and it looks le legit like you have an issue. So they try to scare you, you and they want that, that credit card number. So be cautious with those types of things. We don't want to give anyone a credit card number. We don't want to call any of those phone numbers. So let's say every time you open up your browser, maybe it's Safari and it's Chrome or Firefox and everything's screwed up. Um, one thing is real quick inside these programs, for example, with uh, Safari, you've got um, under Safari preferences, oh no, here it is, uh, the extensions. It's in different sections for each program, like Google Chrome has extensions, Firefox has extensions. Double check your extensions, and you might see something listed inside here. This is, we don't have any extensions, it wants to get me some, but you might see, um, I think it's under system prefer preferences, here's the extensions that we've downloaded. There might be a weird pr uh, extension that you don't identify. You know, if it's a legitimate company that you trust, like Adobe, Microsoft, Apple, uh, all those main companies, fine. If you don't know how it got there or who that company name is here, click it and uninstall the extensions and that might help your problem. But usually for most of us, it's not that easy. Um, we've been tricked, it accidentally downloaded something and after it finished downloading, guess what popped up on our screen? This little logo that says, hey, what's your password? Because you're gonna install something, you get prompted to enter your password and you entered it and you installed that program that was hopefully gonna save you and clean this and clean that and everything that they advertised it would do. So if you're in that boat where now you go and you open up your browser and it's all riddled with weird toolbars and pop-ups and different tabs keep coming up and it's all a big mess. So you're in trouble. Here's what you're gonna do. First of all, if you don't wanna mess with this stuff, come to APT if you're local. Our, our Connect Tech group is gonna be able to offer malicious software removal tools. Uh, they are gonna run third-party programs as well as do what I'm showing you to really flush out your issue. Uh, step, uh, option or no, number two is make sure you've backed up everything because what I'm about to show you, you know, you need to treat as a, 
uh, process that you, you know you gonna need to be careful with and uh, the changes that we make uh, I'll show you some quick ideas on how to you know not screw yourself up but just watch through it and remember that you can always contact apt and our connect text can help you so number one is let's go to um, I'm gonna click on spotlight I get my spotlight window or command uh, command uh, spacebar pulls it right up. Let's open up Activity Monitor. All right, so Activity Monitor under View All Processes. This is everything running behind the scenes on my Mac. And these are the program things that are running. Some are actual programs you use, like Safari. Some are system files that really you will not identify. But what you're looking for here are programs you may have just been tricked to installing. Uh, there's lots of uh, companies where they have legitimate programs that people like, like MacKeeper, Tune Up My Mac. Um, there's all these programs for maintenance that are out there, and the, the, the people that are trying to install software on you might be pretending to be those people. So if you just installed a program, you can go in here, find the program, and choose the little icon with the X to force that program out and quit it. So if you can do that, great because that would be step one is make sure it's not running now the hard part we're gonna go into finder inside finder alright we're not gonna see where I need to go let's click go and where I wanna go first is not listed here on the latest operating systems hold option to reveal the hidden library folder and now we're in the library folder so step one is let's take a look I'm gonna change my view so that you guys can see where I'm going because we're gonna bounce around through some folders so inside this group here, this is my library folder that houses my particular user. If I have multiple family members, multiple users, and they're okay, but I'm not, your problem might be here. If they, are, or if they have the same problem, then wait for the next step. So here, I'm going to first go to application support. So let's come up, let's say I downloaded a program called, uh, I'm going to clean my Mac. So I, I go in there and I find a file called I'm going to clean my Mac and that's my, my culprit that I've identified. You can flush these files by dragging and dropping them into the trash. If you want to be safe, you could drag and drop them onto like your desktop to make a copy before you trash it. In case you find issues by doing this, you could bring back that folder. But check application support for one of those weird programs that maybe you just installed. But that's not all. Scroll down a little bit and you've got a little file here call let's see well I don't have it on my demo actually right about here you'll see launch agents or launch daemons and then you're gonna go into that folder when you go into that launch daemons or launch uh, folder you're gonna find perhaps also a folder that represents that strange company you will see things here you will find you'll find things that are legitimate let me show you the next step because the next step shows those launch folders but your library will probably have those launch folders take a look inside if you find a, something that doesn't belong, a non-trustworthy company, you will see things like Adobe and, and Microsoft and Apple and big names sitting here. If you see a weird program file, throw it in the trash or make a copy first. But let's go back to the main computer. Let's go back into my, this usually is called Macintosh HD. And this one here has a couple things. First of all, under library. We we're going to have another application support, support folder, and you might find that naughty program sitting here. Drag and drop it to the trash. Launch agents, launch daemons, go into these files. Mine are empty on this brand new computer, which is typical. But if you find files here that are from companies that you could identify, leave them be. It, or, or if you find a, a file from a company you don't know, throw them in the trash. So we check these folders. We check the application support folders. In the main applications folder, go find that program and drag and drop it into the trash. Get rid of it, uninstall it, flush it out. And that pretty much should be the ideal solution to really flush out everything that might be inside your computer. At that point, you're going to go in there, you're going to right click the trash, empty trash, and then I would highly recommend then to go ahead and restart your computer. You may have found that you just fixed your problem. If you didn't, or if you have issues, you can go back and save the copied files and put them back to where they first came from. Or hopefully you have a time machine backup if you need to restore some files. Otherwise, you can always seek out professional support like at APT. We have our own group of technicians that can help you out too. So we encourage local customers the Chicago area to come check us out and see if we can help you out. Otherwise, hopefully these tips have helped you out.